Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is October 3rd, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery here. We can see we've been dealing with this cutoff low across Pacific Ocean here, hoping to bring some ridging across Pacific Northwest. See some high clouds moving across the area. A very weak semblance of a disturbance is going to move across the ridge here in the next day or two, cool us down a bit, and kind of just change the wind pattern, not expecting precipitation from it. You can see that upper level low moving across eastern Montana. They're taking a sweet time to get out of the area. Stronger system them out here to the west across the Aleutians west of Alaska here old hurricane off the Mexico coast is now moving inland and weakening as we speak uh, taking a look around the Pacific Northwest all the fires you can see the White River Minnow Ridge Irving Peak Bolt Creek Goat Rocks Kalama Cedar Creek Rum Creek Double Creek and Boulder Mountain these are the main fires across Pacific Northwest as we speak some of them are producing some pretty good amounts of smoke um, currently taking a closer look at the Bolt Creek fire look at the red in there that is high burn uh, high soil burn severity it means it burned really anything that it could all the way down to the dirt including um, small roots and everything all kinds of brush anything that was there pretty much got burned in the red there the uh, yellow is a uh, moderate soil burn severity there too and you can see it exists quite um, it has some pretty good coverage here across the area. Highway 2 runs here. You can see how the fire has been mainly contained north of Highway 2, which is good. And hopefully this doesn't cause any localized landslide or any uh, concerns, flooding concerns around the region there. Um, you guys know how much rainfall we can get here on the west slopes of the Cascades. So hopefully, you know, this is pretty sparsely populated, but, you know, sometimes it can... You can get landslides into the tributaries here and maybe kind of just ruin campgrounds in here and damage the forest. It could take a couple of years to recover for some of these areas. Now, taking a look here, you can see the smoke from these fires drifting down towards Lake Chelan, uh, that White River fire here. You can see the Bolt Creek fire kind of underneath the high clouds here, still producing a good amount of smoke. Cedar Creek fire here, kind of still bringing some smoke to the Willamette Valley. Might be hard to det uh, determine what is smoke and what is low clouds there, though in the Willamette Valley, there's a lot of the area socked in here, including Portland, southwest Washington, Washington, Oregon coast, socked in by these low clouds this morning. That low cloud cover made it all the way up towards Tacoma this morning. Uh, pretty clear here at my house, but you can see the high clouds going over today. And as you look off towards eastern Washington, Idaho, you can see how these uh, lower valleys here kind of get socked in by low clouds. Kind of a feature of when we start to move into fall here underneath ridge conditions in October. Some of these valleys can be socked in by low clouds, as you see. Um, take a look at precipitation across the region. Of course, nothing to speak of in western Washington. If you wanted precip, you had to get out towards Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, way off to the east here. Uh, you see a few blue dots here across western Oregon that may have been dew. Sometimes that dew from the low clouds forms on the rain gauge and can trip the bucket for a hundredth of an inch or two, but no actual precipitation fell yesterday. This is looking at Spokane, talking about smoke spreading north through the week. We're going to turn the winds southerly. Like I mentioned, that very weak system is going to move through the area. It's going to switch our winds up for a day or two. And then we're going to go back offshore and warm back up a little bit again towards next weekend here. But, of course, we've been dealing with the smoke for several weeks now. Nothing out of the ordinary there. You can see Spokane with a weak outlook here. Pretty warm here coming up. Chilly overnight lows, but highs into the 70s and potentially the low 80s for some areas. Look at SeaTac yesterday. All-time daily record high. October 2nd hit 80 there. We might not quite get there today. The record again is 80 set back in 1993. We're probably going to be towards the upper 70s, though. It could get close we'll watch that during the day today portland 88 yesterday quite a bit above average that did not get the record high set back in 1970 and there's quite a bit of low clouds around today so they might not get to that record high today either for portland now checking out the her eight meter above ground smoke you can see this does exist for some of the puget sound this morning you can see the cedar creek fire down through oregon as well and you can see that southerly wind kind of carry some of the smoke north and maybe clear out the Puget Sound for at least a day or two. But not to be the bearer of bad news again, we're probably going to turn this flow offshore again here through later this week here and probably introduce that smoke back into western Washington and Oregon here. So we'll take a look at that here coming up in a moment. This is looking at 500 millibar cyclonic relative vorticity. You can see that system out over the Pacific here. Here's us. There's an upper level low across Montana. As we go through the day today, you can kind of see that weak system. It's not even going to bring any precipitation across the area, but it is going to change our winds up a little bit as it kind of moves through. And then that trough gets reinforced over the Gulf of Alaska here. And then we're going to rebuild the ridging later on through next week. 
Now taking a look at the surface winds here, you can see we still have that easterly component as we go through the morning today. And then we kind of switch things up by the time we get to Tuesday afternoon. You can see kind of an onshore flow going across the region here. Southerly winds through the Puget Sound, uh, bringing that smoke northward into through the North Cascades. But uh, at least the Willamette Valley will get a little bit of a break from that Cedar Creek fire. But then look as we go back into Wednesday morning, and then on into uh, what is this Thursday morning. Now you can plainly see this easterly component again through western Washington, southwest BC, down through Oregon, going to be introducing whatever forest fire smoke is over the Cascades and eastern portions, on into western Washington, western Oregon again, because we're not going to have any precip in the meantime to help squelch these fires. Now taking a look at the European on the left, and the GFS on the right, you can see that cut off low over the Pacific, the one inland over Montana here. Here's the North Pole, Hawaii. There's Siberia out here, British Columbia, Washington, Oregon. Put this into motion here. You see that weak system slide over the top of the ridge, barely even detectable here at 18,000 feet. Then you can see that ridge rebuild as we go through the weekend here. Now watch this polar lobe start to swing down through North BC here. On the European, the GFS a little bit different here as the 060Z run came in. We'll look at the 060 run next too to see what it shows. I think it was different there on the GFS. But you can see this lobe moving down through British Columbia would cool us down quite a bit and would kick things around. Maybe bring a little bit of precipitation through some areas of BC and Washington as we go through on into October 10th and 11th here. We'll have to continue to watch that. Then some kind of transient ridge looks to reform on the back side of that. But you can see the model disagreement we have here with that low moving through. You can see the GFS way more north and much weaker with that feature here as we go through later next week and on into uh, the following week. Now looking at the GFS, this is a 060 run, upper level low here, there's that cutoff low over the Pacific Ocean here, this is dynamic tropopause pressure, you can kind of see the column of the atmosphere shows where temperatures are coldest here, you can see the polar lobes moving around over the North Pole here is BC, Washington, Oregon. Now we're getting into Wednesday here and you can kind of see that ridge building here, cutoff low across the Gulf of Alaska here. There's this polar lobe here that the European was showing and they see the GFS and the 06Z much more prominent with this feature really went and started agreeing with the European here. So this would bring some precipitation to some of the area, but this trajectory is going to be relatively dry and not bring a lot of precipitation across the area. You can see it swing down through and kind of open up across eastern Oregon, Idaho, even there as we go through the following week. But we're way out there, and the GFS just picked up on this feature moving through British Columbia, but the European's been showing it for a few days now. So we'll continue to watch how this uh, evolves. Uh, then we build some kind of transient ridge after that, and you can see the polar lobe kind of strengthening here on the GFS, maybe starting to swing some stuff down through British Columbia here on through later mid-October. Um, but again, we are way out there, too early to be looking at that just yet. But right now we're kind of trying to track this feature that looks like it may move down through British Columbia here. Um, later on through, probably on into early next week is the best way to explain that timing. Now looking here at the six hour precipitation, this is a 060 run. I want to kind of show you that system, what it shows. You can see Southeast Alaska and South Alaska continue to get rainfall. This uh, trough kind of retrogrades. We build this ridge through the weekend here. Then you can see the system swing down, start to bring some precipitation to British Columbia, mainly eastern portions. North Cascades has a little bullseye even there right near the Cedar Creek fire here on the west slopes of the Cascades. Maybe we can squeeze a little bit of precip out of this as it moves down through October, what, 10th and 11th here. You can see Montana getting the better dynamics here. Transient ridge builds, then maybe some more storm systems trying to get in towards the Pacific Northwest. But again, we're over 300 hours out and we're just kind of wish casting at this point. Now taking a look here, Astoria, those low clouds going to keep the temperatures down a bit. Maybe a little bit of a warm up later this week here. Coming up, Klamath Falls, nice temperatures. Look at this. Uh, chilly overnight lows, nice warm days for Klamath Falls here for the next week or so. Seattle, Tacoma, upper 70s today. Then that system's going to kind of change up our winds, bring a little bit of onshore flow and cool us down a bit, but still nice warm days coming up here probably through the weekend here. And then uh, the, uh, you know, we have some low confidence here as we go through the extended forecast here and just what kind of impact that polar lobe is going to have as it tries to slide down through British Columbia. 
and Vancouver International. Similar temperatures, a little bit cooler than Seattle here coming up and maybe a bump up for this weekend and the temperatures there. Brookings, Oregon, maybe a uh, sign for some offshore flow well up into the extended forecast here, but you're probably booked for some low clouds here for the next two days there for Brookings, Oregon. <clears throat> Portland, Oregon here, nice warm temperatures here as we go through the weekend. And again, some low confidence here as that next system tries to move down through British Columbia and the extended here coming up. Uh, looking at Seattle, Tacoma, just kind of showing you guys the ensemble runs here for the European model. Very nebulous, uh, chaotic look at things well off into mid-October here and nothing that we can hang our hats on as of yet or even to get excited about right now. <clears throat> Tillamook, Oregon, similar pattern here, just kind of showing you guys the chaotic signal there through the extended. Now we got some new La Nina uh, or Enso data coming in here. Uh, basically, this is looking at the entire planet here. This is 180 degrees west. This is west of Hawaii. This is just kind of showing you that we have basically sunnier than normal conditions across this area. And we've had this convection just kind of hanging out over the maritime continent over there in the western Pacific here for a while now. You can see it's been mostly the dominant feature here for much of the summer. And now as we move into fall, that's continuing. So what does that mean? Well, basically, the pattern is not switching up yet. So um, we'll more on that here in a second. Um, you can see this is back from 1950 all the way through 2022. These are El Nino and La Nina conditions all the way back over 70 years ago. You can plot all of our strong El Ninos and all of our La Nina conditions here. And you can see how we've been in this extended La Nina here. And we look to go into it for our third straight winter coming up here. Seems to be a feature that happens every 25 years or so. It happened back in 2000 and it happened back in the 70s as well. Now, taking a look a little bit closer here, you can see that on, the only two months we weren't in La Nina conditions were last summer, 2021. And even then we were right on the borderline of it there. We're close to being in moderate La Nina conditions right now, just a hair under that. And we should remain so here at least through um, towards the new year coming up here. Odds have not changed yet. They won't update this probably until one more week from now. But here we go with... Um, looking at the CFS run, October 3rd, you can see pr not, not many changes here. As we get into October, November, December, then we start to climb out of it as we move towards January. We start to weaken that La Nina condition here across the area. February still probably just into La Nina conditions, but by March, April, or May, we could be out into neutral conditions here. And again, not much we can do, but just kind of watch this evolve. Now you can see, we're looking here, this is North America. You can see Hawaii down here, the Western Pacific and Japan here. You can kind of see this similar pattern here over the last 60 days. We've got this ridging out over the Western Pacific or off to the west of the Aleutian Islands. And it's been leading to this Gulf of Alaska trophy and bringing those wet conditions of Southeast Alaska, the South Coast, and then the ridging downstream across the Pacific Northwest here. And that's why we've been so darn dry this kind of raspy wave train pattern has continued to bring us the ridging here for the western portion of north america here and you can kind of see it here in the um, upper level winds 200 millibars to be exact 39,000 feet you can see the ridging here with the stronger jet shown here and that's probably has to do with la nina conditions and the madden julian oscillation that we talked about I'll go back up here and kind of show you that this uh, this convection has been hanging out over the maritime continent. That's probably why this energy transfer goes northward um, of the maritime continent, gets caught up in the jet stream and causes that downstream ridging, then troughing over the Gulf of Alaska, then ridging across North America. And that's what's keeping us so dry and warm <clears throat> shown here again in this symbol there. So anyway, that's what's been going on here. And it, you can see end date October 1st, much drier than normal here across Pacific Northwest and much warmer than normal as well, which looks to continue for a bit longer here. So anyway, uh, yeah, we'll just continue to watch these La Nina numbers come in here and we'll just we just have to wait for the pattern change, basically. I mean, uh, I'm just enjoying the nice weather while it is nice anyway. You know, I don't enjoy these mornings of some heavy smoke moving around the Puget Sound, but, I, you know, you just have to kind of deal with it and see how that goes. But anyway, we're looking off in the extended. 
around October 10th or 11th, looks like a system may slide down through British Columbia. It's moisture starved, but it could bring some precipitation across the region. European and GFS are now showing it, so we'll continue to watch that. And if nothing else, it'll really push this ridge off to the west at least, and maybe it'll stir things up and kick that smoke out of here for a while. But we really need a nice atmospheric river or some kind of precipitation maker to come through the region here and start to squelch these fires. And right now we just don't have it. We don't see it in the extended forecast. Things can still change quickly here. It is October and we'll continue to monitor that day by day. So we'll check things out again tomorrow. We'll continue to look for any signals in the extended and I will talk to you guys then.